Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands, I'm Pete. In today's video, we are going to be doing a little bit of a showdown. We got the new to us uh, 2003 Articat F7. That thing, uh, she dangles real nice, happy with that purchase. We're going to be putting that up against uh, Scooter's XC700. That thing there, that's been top dog the last, well, year that we've been uh, ripping that thing. It's smoked everything that we put against it. The only thing it came side by side with was uh, Turbo Tony's... Uh, what was it, an 800 Garda Cat, like 2018, so this old girl flies. So I think, you know, after that 700 shootout, you guys have been saying that we need something uh, fast to put this thing down, and I think we finally found something. So hopefully, I got good high hopes for this F7, but uh, we got to do a few little modifications to it to even the playing field. We're going to add some, uh, some dangle diggers, put some more studs in that track there. You know, it's a good day to be in the shop, you know, messing with the sleds there. It is colder than a miserable woman outside there. But the bonus, I had a fan of the channel stop in and drop me off a box of beer. Like, could this day get any better? <laughs> Thanks very much, bud. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be drinking those celebratory beers. Hey, hey. <laughs> pack these bad boys away. Oh, oh. Looks like we got to make some room here. Beer fridge is a little bit on the full side. There we go. Nice one. So yeah, not sure if you caught the uh, last video when I bought this one, but it's a real sweetie. And I'm hoping it can give this one a run for its money. You know, Scooter's machine looks good, works really good. But I think one of the key reasons why it's working so darn good is it's got a nice aggressive uh, track on it. You know, it's got a decent panel on there and it's rocking 144 studs. You know, it's got uh, a 121 there. What do they got? 48 windows. So your basic two patterns, 96 studs. And then he's got every second window, two extras. So yeah, that's 144. I think that's giving him the digging power to dangle and uh, rocking everybody else. So this one here, she's beauty. I had her out in the field. She works really good. You know, it does dangle, but uh, this one here, even though it's a little bit longer track, this is a 128, so I think they got 51 or 2, I think 52 windows or 51 windows, I can't remember. Uh, so yeah, it's only got the two studs per window, so I think uh, JP took a bunch of studs out of the red and white sidewinder, and they're the same length for this track, so I think what I'll do is every other window I will add two studs to even the playing field. It'll kind of work out this, you know, that one has 144. This will end up having 150 or something like that, but I mean, it'll be close. So uh, yeah, let's do that. I know they're not gonna be identical. You know, this one's gonna end up having a little bit extra track and a couple more studs, but I mean, that thing's been rocking everything. So, you know, this is as even as we can get, it, you know? You know, this XC700 of Scooters is a survivor. It's in really good shape. And I mean, it's only got, what is that, 6,374. I'm guessing it's going to be miles because, you know, it's predominantly in miles. So we'll go with that. And this motor is bone stock. It's never been apart, you know. it's uh, This thing spent a lot of its life just sitting. There was quite a few years Scooter uh, never really drove this thing at all. So she's, you know, been well looked after and it's, you know, never been popped or apart. It just works really good, you know. The clutches are all basically stock. They're just adjusted up nice. You know, we got the, uh, the belt deflection and everything's good, you know. It's sitting just the hair up in there, you know. It's... Doesn't drive away, she's not too tight, but the clutches are all in decent shape, you know. Uh, they're working great, this thing pulls real hard. So yeah, hopefully we can uh, give it a good run. This one here, I don't really know the history on this because I just bought it, but uh, I mean, to get the mileage off of here, you gotta have her running, but uh, let's see what happens. 72. So yeah, this one's got 7,200 on it. I'm guessing the same thing. It's in miles, and I have no idea if this motor's ever been apart or rebuilt or anything. I mean, it looks... This cylinder looks pretty clean, so I'm wondering if that's been swapped out at some point in its life, but uh, I don't really know. Oh, looks like we got a nose-to-nose -nose face off here. Hey, take it easy, boys. But yeah, this one here is in good shape, and same thing. The belt and clutches, everything's all set. 
you know, we got about the same kind of set up on the secondary there, about the flexion's good, clutches are in good shape, you know, the rollers are all good, everything's working the way it should, so, you know, this should be real world conditions, fairly even. So I say we grab the cherry picker, get it all set up, and then we'll uh, lift that arse end up and start studding the track, baby. Well, the sliders look like they got some life left in it, but uh, we got some noisy bearings and that wheel right there, that one ain't got no rubber on it. So I think we're gonna have to yeah, do a little once over on this, swap out some bearings and wheels and whatnot. And then uh, this track, I think this track is like brand new. It is in fantastic shape. So uh, yeah, uh, score here. Just gonna pop the belt off of here to make it easier to spin the track around and uh, these ones are a little hard to get because it's a little awkward to reach down in here but just put the brake on and then give her a push and a twist that belt drops down PR it just like so spinner no problem now that we got her rolling nice and free we'll give it a spin once around the world just to make sure we don't have any missing studs or rips or tears in the track and i mean it spins nice and easy this thing oh she's gonna she's gonna fly this is easy rolling resistance here like look at this one hand nice one just like the thunder from down under these studs are looking good and there we are right back around so yeah zero issues with this track so yeah let's uh let's pop some extra holes in here we might have a change of plans here i did not realize that these f7s the tunnel there it's cut out you got your tunnel protector running right down the center and then it's dropped down on both edges so yeah if we go and throw studs in these outer windows they're gonna chew into that tunnel like an angry beaver so uh uh, that's not a good idea. Uh, I think all I'm gonna do is uh, we'll just add some to the uh, center section I don't want to risk, you know wrecking the tunnel on this thing You know if it had if this track had some closed windows in it You know I would pop some studs in the closed window section of it But uh, because they run still in that open area There'd be plenty of room for the tops of the studs. They wouldn't chew into nothing, but uh, yeah, Unfortunately, we're going to be sticking with the center of this here. Before we get going, I've got this purpose built. You know, that's a stud cutter there for your, your track. You can get that from Royal Distributing or even the manufacturers that make the studs. You know, you buy them from those guys. And uh, I like to sharpen these up, so I like to take my file, uh, file the inside of it, and then file the outside so she's nice and sharp. She'll go through that track like Buddha. I got a half-mooned file there. If you got a little round file, it works good too, but... I just give the edge of it on the inside a bit of a filing just to sharpen her up. And then same on the outside edge. There's no real science to it. I mean, you just uh, drill the holes. It's one of those tedious jobs, you know, it's going to take a little bit. So um, just grab yourself a nice one and uh, take your time, pitter-patter, get at her. Now that track has almost as many studs as Yellowstone. <laughs> hopefully we don't rip any out. <laughs> nice one. Uh, hopefully adding them to the center there is going to be enough bite to uh, dangle past Scooter. Got her all studded up and then I realized Scooter's got the sheet angle sticker on the windshield of that. So we got to have a sheet angles on the front of the Firecat because she does dangle. But uh, she's looking good. So if we're going to go out racing, it's looking good, uh, I think. I gotta look good too. Oh yeah, there you go. Team Arctic leather coat, even's got the checker flag on it. I think that's a precursor to what's about to happen. We're winning, baby, just like Charlie Sheen. Well, it is cold outside, but we got these two lined up. They're both looking good. Hopefully they both work good, fingers crossed. And uh, <laughs> JP's back there. That's where he wants to start from. He wants the winner of uh, this showdown to uh, 
stretch the legs on the Sidewinder and show what uh, new age power is like. And that's a big old heavy sled, but that's got a derp ski on there. So uh, yeah, these things are gonna dangle, no doubt about it. Don't know which one's gonna win, but uh, we're about to find out. Couldn't really reel them in, you know. It was staying even, so you're not reeling that one in. No, that was uh, she was dangling. Uh, we got to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, race number three. <laughs> Maybe it is that lame, but. Texas two step down there. Let's go swing out. Well, that's two to one for the F7, which a lot of you guys say that you know. Oh, lay off. oh, listen to him. He's talking like a Ford owner. Oh, I let you win. Okay. <laughs> we gotta do her again, I guess. Why not? We're having fun. Alright, race number four. so cold I'd say we can go all day just back and forth it's like one for one one for one scooter says he's lifting though it's got too much power <laughs> <I'm lifting him>. <laughs> <laughs> these are some pretty wild sleds you know they look good they work good these are it's 2023 and <laughs> these are 20 year old plus sleds and they haul so uh, yeah this is a you guys are right these f7s are fast Nobody believes that that thing is as fast as it is, but I mean, here you go. It's uh, one for one, man. Let's see what that sidewinder's like against these things. <laughs> JP starting from way back there with the sidewinder, giving Scooter a bit of a head start. Let's see. Get her, boys! Jeez. JP versus Scooter. <laughs> Give him a head. 
head start. <laughs> Jeremy Langston. <laughs> 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 that start was, oh my god, and he still reeled me in and went past. It was so, like uh, fishing for cats. Yeah. And that's not, 250 tune? Uh, I'm not telling you which one. Oh, he's got her in the big tune. <laughs> the anyway, yeah, these sleds are awesome. Obviously, the newer stuff is uh, even more awesome. <laughs> All right, well, I mean, no better way to spend a Saturday than to rip and race with your buddies and uh, you know, kick some ass, take some names, but uh, those two things right there are basically kind of equal, you know. I know a lot of you don't believe it, but that XC700 is fast, but so is that F7, you know. But the only one really kicking ass and taking names is JP with the winder, because, uh, yeah, even with, you know, back in the days of pinks with all those sun sled lengths, it just goes by you like nothing, like you're going backwards. So, uh, yeah, I mean costs a lot more money than uh, those ones oh yeah it is still cold out here we didn't really get to run the viper but it's just spinning like crazy it's no contest against those two other sleds so you know what it's cold i say we uh let's go back for a beer <laughs> what do you say <laughs> it's already cold out here let's go get a cold one in our hands subscribe please consider doing so you know it helps us out we're uh, trying to grow the channel we're having fun doing it and uh, you know leave a comment let us know what you think about it and as always take her easy <laughs>